happy, beautiful, amazing evening, OG world. It is my distinct privilege to introduce a great friend of mine, Dennis Wong. So Dennis is a pharmacist, a phenomenal human. Uh, I like to call him a silent genius because he, he's very quiet, but when you get him talking, you're going to realize there are so many pearls of wisdom. Uh, so that's part of my duty here tonight is, is to tap into that diamond mine, that gold mine uh, on so many topics. Happy, beautiful evening, Dennis. Where in the world are you today? Right now, we are at the Boca Raton at the OG Getaway, uh, enjoying the incentive trip uh, by the gracious gift from the OG company. And so it's, it's been beautiful out in Florida here. So actually, I like the way you, you generously describe that as a gift, but it, it really wasn't a gift. You earned it. In fact, you earned not one, not two, but this is your third. So yes. how in the world have you done that? Three, three straight times you've won the getaway. That's, that's a powerful statement of consistency. There's a couple of things. Uh, you know, we got into OG uh, almost four years ago because, as uh, you know, and may, some people may know also that I've been following you since I started the nutritional practice back in 2002, 2003. And the first time when I was trying to learn from, you know, find a mentor to follow, people that I talked to, what they told me was, if you ever had a chance, train with Dr. Bob Rakowski. And so back in 2004, I actually tried to get the schedule with you, but your schedule and my schedule somehow did not work, especially your schedule because you've been, you know, training all over the world. So I kind of put that in my back of my mind and saying one of these days, and meantime, when Facebook came into play, I was able to connect with you and follow you around and your practice, et cetera. So when I found out about this organo, uh, you know, healthy coffee stuff that you're doing, and I got really curious because a lot of patients that I work with, and that I'm sure similar to you, that a lot of them come into you, your practice and say they're exhausted, they're fatigued, and some will tell me that they cannot start their day until after they finish a pot or two of coffee in the morning. So I'm like, this is crazy. You know, there's some great coffee out there that Dr. Bob's using. Why not bring it in? And so four years ago, when I had a chance to uh, attend your lecture at the CCN conference uh, in Minneapolis, I approached you and said, Dr. Bob, I want to know more because I think this is going to help people. We're always trying to find, you know, new things and different things that we can do to help uh, patient and client. So this is what I did uh, after I learned from you about how to use it, what it does, etc. So I started introducing to a lot of my uh, patient in the practice of pain, sleep, anxiety. And then some of my colleagues, pharmacists actually started asking me saying, what are you doing? So I started sharing with them, telling them, you know, to use it in their practice, etc. So with that, um, just by trying to help people, the business side grow. So because the business side grow, the company have these incentive trip that we keep hitting and working with, you know, looking at business side and teaching and coaching by you, Jacob and uh, Kelly, actually helped me learn a little bit better. Okay, you know, when I'm using these product, this incentive, that I can uh, enjoy. So we started learning and working a little bit on that. So yeah, this is our third trip. Our first trip was actually Mexico. And the pictures that was our, uh, uh, actually this is from second trip. This is second trip is cruise at the Cozumel uh, port. And we had a tour there and they took this wonderful pictures for us. Well, let's take a step back. So. You know, you're a phenomenally educated human being. Thank you. And how much data did it take for you to understand that, hey, this is a better coffee, this makes health sense. Let's talk about the health sense first. How much did it take you to figure that out? Because it seems to be a hurdle for some people to get over. It's actually, it's not hard at all because from my point of view is, you know, a lot of 
as wellness or nutrition uh, practitioners or integrative or functional, wh whatever you, however you want to call it, a lot of us understand about reishi mushroom and what it can do. And I agree with you, there's a lot of people out there, even though they understand the reishi, they cannot somehow get around to using this coffee that infuses reishi. And from my point of view is, I like, you know, one time you mentioned that when your patient said, oh, I need to drink coffee. So that's what I think started doing is that if you're gonna drink coffee, you either drink, you know, coffee with the superfood in it or you don't drink it because other coffee like for myself when i drink starbucks even small half cup i get jittery i got stomach ache i got heart palpitation right away and so i just can't stand it so when people come into my office with these big frappuccino i looked at them and i shake my head and said before we can do anything this is, has to go so it's not hard, you know, sometimes we overthink. I think that's the problem. Because I talked to one of my colleagues, a uh, functional MD, and she said, yeah, I studied it, I know reishi really well, but how is it compared to using the reishi and organic coffee? I said, it's easier, you know, and just don't overthink. Let them try it and then you'll see they will come back and tell you. So one of the original phrases with the company was, it's easy, it's simple, it's coffee. They switched Absolutely. it to it's easy, it's simple, it's organo because we do so many other things. But, you know, I think part of it, Dennis, part of your success has to be your posture. You know, so I, I can look at you and I can say, look, I, I can see why you have posture, you have a phenomenal knowledge base, you have credentials, you have pharmacies. But what about the average person? And I, this might be a difficult thing to ask because you can't, come at it from the average person point of view, but how does the average person get someone to try this wonderful coffee? And that's where, you know, I'm going back to don't overthink, right? It's let them try it at least a week, if not 30 days. And then you don't have to tell them anything. Just say, hey, this is healthy coffee, better than, you know, the coffee that you are drinking. It may help you. It may improve your health. Why don't you try it for a week at least, if not, you know, if you can, 30 days. And that's where, like my first patient that when I got the product, my first patient that I uh, sample and let him try, he had a lower back pain for two years. And narcotic painkiller did not do anything. They did injection, didn't do anything. They did the MRI to find out if there's a physical or, you know, spinal cord injury, etc. They couldn't find anything. And so he actually gave up on all the painkiller because he's a farmer. So he's, you know, especially summertime operating these big machinery. So he didn't want to be on narcotics. So he just suffered through it. So when I got my first uh, black coffee, I actually gave his wife six package. And I said, okay, let him try this because his lower back pain, this may help. I don't know, just try it. So she took it home. That day, he took two cups because they know me. So they said, okay, you know, um, coffee, coffee, let's try it. So he tried two cups and he told me that his back pain actually was about 10 out of 10 because he's been suffering for two years and not taking any pain medication. After two cups, within an hour or so, he said his pain got better. And he couldn't believe it because he didn't you know, do anything different except drinking two cups of this coffee that I gave him. So the next day, I gave him his wife a six packages of black. So the next day, he drank that four packages on the next day. By the end of the day, his pain went down to four. So he came into our pharmacy and bought a box. And he said he's been, and I didn't know that. I did not see them. I, I'm one of those that, you know, Dr. Paul, you keep saying, you sample, you got to follow up. I'm bad with that. So I didn't follow up at all. And two months later, he came into the store and bought two boxes of black. So my operation manager saw him and said, oh, you know, is it working for you now that you, you know, you're coming to buy heat? And so he said, well, this is my 
four box, boxes that I bought. This is my two months. And he said, I drink four cups of black a day and my back pain is now totally gone. So as simple as that, not saying that everybody's going to respond the same way, but you got to give them a try and just tell them, hey, it's healthy coffee. It may help you try it and go from there. I, I love the testimonials. And I have to tell you, Kevin, coming back from the Africa getaway Mauritius, there's a population that really struggles in terms of health. And so those are some of the most powerful health testimonials that I've seen. And I think somehow, some way, we, we take it for granted. Uh, maybe we just need that fresh perspective every single time that <laughs> there, there's little doubt that this is going to be much, much, much healthier than the choice that 99.99% of people are making, if not 100%. Yeah, so yeah absolutely. Powerful there. Um, you know, so as we start talking about some of the, some of the skill set in terms of follow-up, we could probably all get better at that. In fact, I'm, I'm sure we all could, but I think one of your strengths is mindset. So right. that's certainly my impression of you. So tell me, tell me how you train your mind or how, is that a natural gift or is this acquired or tell me about that. How, how long is it's, mindset? How did you get yours? Mine is actually acquired. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I'm one of those that, uh, like you said, I'm quiet if, you know, I don't talk much unless, you know, I'm asked to whatever because I'm actually introverted. Like Eric Worre said, you know, he's introverted, but when he has to be on the stage, then he can talk. After that, he's very private type of thing. So I'm one of those that to the point of I am actually, even I want to learn something from somebody, when I look at that person and I decided, okay, this person's going to be my mentor, I can never approach that person because I am so introverted, I get scared. So I, what I've been doing is that trying to be more positive and looking at things, choosing the right word so that you can be more positive and making conscious decision. So one of the things that I've been doing lately, some people may know, you may notice that I've been doing Facebook like every day. So I've actually been doing consistently Facebook like every day for 47 days. I have not missed oh. a day yet. And this is sort of my consistency training for myself consciously. Doesn't matter how late. I was traveling to, uh, you know, down to Boca yesterday. So we flew into Orlando, etc. By the time we got into Orlando, supper done, with the flight delay, etc. I got back to hotel at after midnight. So last night, and also I got a bit of the summer cold for a week now. So I wasn't, I was really exhausted. But yesterday at one o'clock, I told myself, no, I'm going to go on Facebook. So I did my Facebook live at one o'clock in the morning. So if you really want to train yourself, you just have to keep pushing it. The other thing that I'm doing, uh, pushing myself is that I got this Bible app on my phone. And being a Christian, I have to admit, I have not read the Bible, you know, cover to cover. Some great people will do that, and I always wanted to do that. And on the Bible app, they have a 90 days plan. I started a week ago. So I finished reading a book of Genesis within five days. I've never done that. So I am pushing in different area, and that's how you got to do it. If you want it, you want to be, you know, consciously being able to do things and have that mindset then you just keep doing it. If you give the excuse, then it's gonna, uh, you're gonna fall off. Then you go back on, keep going. Well, I, I like that you're using technology as a friend, right? So Facebook yes. is such a phenomenal way to expand your horizons. And I actually uh, think that that's why we're having this conversation. You know, Organo certainly noticed your consistency. You've been on the, on the trips, but they like your content. They like your message. They like your consistency. Uh, and that certainly is a, a pathway to, you know, where, where everybody wants to go. Cars, canyons, as I like to quote my, my wonderful friend, Sachin Patel. 
So let's just take a second and compare. You own traditional businesses. So tell me about that. Let's compare traditional business to network marketing business. Absolutely. Um, so as you mentioned before that uh, I'm a pharmacist by training. And so over the years, my goal always is how can I help the patients and what can I do to, you know, uh, get them better, either traditional, et cetera, et cetera. And over the year, I've learned it that traditional medicine is great for acute care. We all know that, you know, you got pain, you got heart attack, all of that. Uh, traditional medicine will help, but we are seeing more and more chronic issues with the patient. So we need to look at what can we do for chronic care. So that's where nutrition and stuff come in. So way back when, I was working for a big uh, pharmacy chain in Canada, uh, almost like Walgreens, it's called Shoppers Drug Mart. And you've seen it, I'm sure you've been to Canada many times. And got to the certain point that the corporate won't allow me to do what I need to do for the patient. So 21 years ago, my wife's a pharmacist also, so we decided and we took the chance and opened up our own independent pharmacy. And 21 years ago, when we opened it up, the whole industry said, you shouldn't do that because a lot of independent pharmacy were closing down. 21 years later, we um, have uh, two pharmacies that we own and I also operate, own and operate uh, medical, two medical clinics. And I have a nutritional company that we started two years ago. So compared to that, for that, we had invested Oh, probably over a million, if not almost two million dollars over the year to get where we are. Compared to Organo, when I saw you four years ago in Minneapolis and I said, I'm in, you said, sign here, I pay $1,500. And I'm just keep working with it. I have not had to put more money into it. So that's the difference. And also is that I don't have to worry about employees. My brick and mortar business, I have about 20 employees that I have to look after, manage. Um, but in Organo is, you know, whoever in my team, they are their own uh, business owner. So, you know, they do their business. I just have to coach them guide them as I've been coached and guided by, you know, you and Kelly and Jacob and the rest of the Organo team. And so that's the difference. It's a lot less time consuming to manage staff and also way less expense to get into the business. I, I want to share a, a funny, similar anecdote. I was talking to a diamond from Hungary named Sylvester. Great. And, and he had a successful automobile dealership for a number of years. And he said, you know, Bob, I had this great dealership. I had a lot of employees and I'm the only one on my, within my business to take a vacation like we were taking in Mauritius, like you've taken with the OG getaways. And he says, you know what, now I've got 26 people from Hungary that are having five-star vacations. And so that's the beauty of this you business. Yeah. Everybody wins. It's the teamwork. And essentially, you know, they, they've said a lot of people, you know, the job isn't really going to get them where they want to go because no. there's always a ceiling. Uh, and you had a ceiling when you were working, were working for the farm chain, whether it was of what you wanted to do. Right. But t tell me your vision now. I mean, the, the market has just gotten bigger. The product offering has gotten bigger. Everything's gotten bigger. What's your vision for the future? For my vision is I'm going to try and work more and more on my organo business because I see that it's, you know, a lot easier than traditional brick and mortar business. And when we talk about brick and mortar business for our pharmacy business, you know, as many of you know that Canada is socialized medicine. So even prescription medication, there is certain uh, large part is covered by government. So now government actually, uh, it's great system. Uh, don't get me wrong, but the government can 
only spend so much money because there's a lot of people getting sicker and sicker and sicker because nobody's taking care of their health. There's no prevention. There's always bandage approach now. So to the point that government are actually cutting how much they are reimbursing the pharmacy. So pharmacy business are actually struggling. And um, I said I have two pharmacies. Actually, up to eight weeks ago, I had three pharmacies. I sold one off because we can no longer um, operate that third pharmacy profitably. So for my, my goal is that if I can work as much as I can in organo and helping people prevention and healthier, that's where I'm going. And that's one of the reasons that I started also my nutritional company site is that, you know, that's going to be sort of, I'm not going to have a brick and mortar for that one either. That's going to be just sort of distribution across Canada, but traditional distribution. Fantastic. So, you know, I, I look at, you know, Kelly and I also own traditional business. And I can tell you that the cost of doing traditional business has gone up over the years. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But our, our ability to do it has been compressed because yeah. of rule changes. Yes. Now, let's compare that to coffee. <laughs> let's compare that to travel. Let's compare that to, to skin care. These are expanding industries, and I don't, I don't see the regulators getting involved with coffee to the point where we're going to have any challenge with that. Do you foresee any, see any coffee challenges in the future? No, not at all, because, you know, like we all said, everybody drink, well, almost everybody drink coffee or tea, you know. Um, and like our friend uh, Melissa, she doesn't drink coffee, but she can still share the coffee with, you know, her friend, families, and client who drink coffee that's going to benefit. So, you know, coffee business never going to stop because if you look at it, McDonald's got now McCafe, you know. Uh, Dairy Queen uh, in Canada, sooner or later, going to get into coffee. A lot of these fast food chains are getting into coffee business because they see that this is the business that, you know, never going to die. It's like when, way back when, when we're in pharmacy, everybody said pharmacy business never going to die because everybody's sick, everybody needs medication. So we're in the you know, right profession and right business. But unfortunately, the whole you know, healthcare system is going down. But you see that I, I've talked to patients and saying, okay, you got to take this you know, supplement because you need that. And they looked at it and saying, I can't afford it. Meantime, they have $6 Frappuccino in their hand while they're talking to me. So we know that people are not going to stop drinking coffee. You know, I'll, I'll have a couple of quotes come to mind. One, and both of them are from Warren Buffett. And, and Warren Buffett talked about the sick care system, what you do, what, what I do, that's health care. We're taking people and we're going, okay, let, let's move in the direction of health with healthy uh, measures fully recognizing that you know, aggressive cases justify aggressive measures and, and when people need aggressive stuff hey we, we send them to, to medicine but yeah. Warren Buffett talked about the sick care system actually being a parasite to the entire economy crippling nations uh, but he also said this he said what you do let that be your hobby what the world does let that be your business Absolutely. Uh, and that makes perfect good sense in, in the fact that the world does drink coffee so, you know, in network marketing, we talk about the why, right? The why is, is the most important thing. So yeah. tell me about that. What's your why? My why is a few of them. When I started, uh, the reason why I got into healthcare is because of my parents. And I have not shared this with a lot of people. And uh, when my mom was uh, running in Second World War, she was you know, with my grandfather still around and they were running in Second World War. And because of the war, my grandfather got the dysentery and they could not find any nurse or physician to help him. So he died from dysentery. So my mom made the commitment to my grandfather that all of her kids gonna be in medical field so that we can help and care for other people. So that is my big why. And then as I got into pharmacy and stuff, and when I, you know, being able to help people, it's very rewarding. And I'm sure, you know, you, you know the feeling. They're very rewarding. So for me, as long as I can help people, 
And so this is how I run my business last 21 years. We don't make a lot of money, but as long as I'm still around and I'm being able to help people, I'm happy with it. But now, last 14 years, this picture you know, on our screen, that's my hua. Without these three beautiful people, I care less what I do. And so for me is for them to get healthy and to live comfortably, I'm trying to be example myself, drinking healthy coffee, you know, eating properly, taking nutrition, showing them that why I help people and you know what kind of reward you get. So especially my two boys, we're training them to get into health care so that they have basic training that they need, but at the same time, we're actually teaching them, actually teaching them, hello, am I still on? You are, yep. Yeah, sorry, you, yeah, my screen said uh, internet went away, so, so teaching them why they should be helping people and why, you know, organo is good. So my two boys drink um, hot chocolate every day, at least once a day. My, uh, Older sons, are, he's turning to 14. He's actually uh, did the class presentation about organo twice already at school. And as we we're coming down to uh, Orlando for this trip, he was texting his friend saying, hey, remember the hot chocolate I drank? Do you guys want to try it? It's good. So he got apparently two of his friends at Shaw bring me some samples, so when we go back, I have to drive him around to drop off some sample. So, you know, teaching them and being example and making sure that they understand why we do this is my why. Like I said, you know, without them, I don't really need to do anything. I do whatever. You know, I want, I want to go back to your first why because it's so powerful. So, Dennis, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have four brothers and four sisters, so there's nine of us. I'm number nine. And how many are in healthcare? Um, my oldest one is a retired physician. My third one, no, sorry, my I'm I have to count because so total of about I think four or five of us are in the healthcare. Okay. Yeah, your your mother created a phenomenal legacy, and and I, you know your boy would like to see anybody pass, and that had to be horrible. But your your grandfather has got to be you know depending on your belief system. I believe he's smiling at you and your siblings and and your mom's commitment to make the world better because you you certainly do that. And then you married Cindy, and and Cindy's a phenomenal pharmacist, and you know it, it, sometimes they say opposites attract, but you two seem really similar. She's that strong, powerful, silent type too. She uh, is but, even uh, more quieter than me. So, you know, compared to her and me, I am a chatterbox. Okay. But your <laughs> boys, they seem a lot more dynamic. So tell me about that. When I was younger, uh, I am very outgoing and very, uh, you know, sociable. What happened is that I was born and raised in Burma. And that's a socialist country. And to this day, you know, they say, oh, they got the election, whatever. Depends on who you talk to and how you look at it. So very oppressed country. And we're being Chinese there. We are sort of second class citizens. So we always, my mom always want us to be in medical uh, field type of thing. And being Chinese back in Burma uh, when we're growing up, we were actually not allowed to get into medical field. So my mom has a family business, textile family business back home that we distribute all over the country. We did fairly well, we were middle class, but because we cannot get into the, you know, the education that we wanted, she finally decided, my, one of my brothers already in Canada, and she finally decided that, okay, the last two kids, if I don't leave the country and, left leave everything they're not going to get the education that i want them to have so when i was 19 my mom decided finally to leave burma and so all our business actually government took it 
And so wow. we came out to we came out to Canada. Government gave us eleven dollar US each for the trip, seventeen hour trip. So we literally ate one meal a day for that seventeen hour trip to get to Canada. And so with that, I actually had we actually had a lot of stress from that. And so my mentality and all of that changed and I became very introvert when I got to Canada. And now I'm telling my two kids that they have the privilege of being born here and be able to do whatever they want to do. So I'm trying to make sure that their mindset is the same as when I was young growing up and that there is nothing that preventing them to be who they want to be. You know, I, I, one, you and Cindy always lead by example, which I love that. But tell me that again. So your son has done two organic presentations. It's, how did that come about? Um, because, as you know, since we started the Organo, you and Kelly always said, you know, Dennis, you've got to be at the event. You've got to learn things there. So we've been to Organo event um, probably last three years. The first year with my scheduling and stuff, I think for six months with the scheduling and stuff, we didn't make it to any of the Organo event. But we started attending the first, uh, the Tampa Expo. And when we attended the Tampa Expo, Sin and I decided if we're going to do this, and a lot of stuff, you know, everything that we're doing, the same as, you know, you and Kelly, whatever we're doing is for our son and daughters, right? We're creating health and wealth and we're leading by example. So I told Sydney that if we're going to do this and we're going to attend the conference, these events, if they allow the kid, my kid has to attend. So I literally talked to, uh, you know, you and Kelly at that time, and I said, do they, you know, allow kid in there? And Kelly said, yeah, absolutely. So my two kids actually been attending Organo event, every event since the Tampa Expo. And they will sit through the whole conference. They will listen. And sometimes they got their headphone on and stuff. But when they come out of the, you know, conference and send and I'm talking about it or we're at the team meeting or after the team meeting, they'll then tell me, did you know Dr. Bob said that? Did you know Holton Buck said that? I'm like, I didn't hear that because, you know, my brain's so full, but they hear that. And I'm like, you are listening to your music. No, I'm listening to whoever on the stage. So with that, Last year, uh, last two years, Timothy actually, in their school, they have to do their public speaking. And they have to do, uh, you know, presentation. So two years ago, Timothy said, I want to talk about Organo. Can you help me? So I helped him put together a presentation. He did the presentation. And then last year presentation, his title is actually how to make a million dollars when, when you turn 23. I love it. Because he is so uh, excited by Jacob's success and stuff. So that was his title. And so he talked about how Jacob got into Organo and what Jacob did and how we all can do this and become millionaire. And it's not difficult. It's just mindset and a bit of hard work. So he did that last year. And then he actually brought hot chocolate for the whole class. But because of the school policy, they're not allowed to take it. So mm. now this summer he's messaging his friends and saying, remember that call, you know, hot chocolate. I can drop it off. So, so let's talk about events because a lot of people consider that, myself included, the secret boss of this entire industry. So how important in are events to you and your success? For me, it's really, really big because when I go to a fan, yes, a lot, you know, people will say, you go to a fan, you're not going to make money because you're spending money there. But for me, that's where I learned a lot about, you know, organo, not from even the stage, but being around with other people doing it already, networking and talking to them and just watching 
I'm very visual. The same thing with even my functional medicine side. If I don't go attend a conference, there's some cases that I was busy and some company will give me free live stream because they want me to, you know, listen to their conference. I'm sure the same thing with you even more uh, because of what we do and where we are. And one time I got the weekend uh, live stream, I turn it on, I listened to about half an hour and then I got distracted and then I got the computer on and the whole weekend I got the computer on live stream, but I never watch it. So for me, that in itself, I had to go to the event. But for the organo, that mindset of, oh, network marketing is not good. If you come to these events, that will change you. And that's what I find it that that's why I'm bringing my kids to these events. You know, some of the friends in our team, you know, they ask, oh, you always bring the kids. One time, actually, one of the events, I took my kid out of school so that they can come and attend the event. And I'm, I'm that serious about event, and I believe that this is a good education for them. We well, use the term belief, and that's actually one of the things that I have always had a, a step up. And when I, I went to my first event, my belief was almost non-existent. And then it went to a point where I had that critical quantum leap that, okay, this is real. You know, I'm yeah. going to make this happen. So how has the, have the event structure impacted your personal belief, Cindy's personal belief, in the industry of what we do and it's our potential? A, it's a lot because... You mentioned it many times before, you know, when we're having meetings or when we're having a talk, we got approached by these network marketing company and we don't want to talk to them because our belief system is network marketing is bad. This is, you know, pyramid scheme and, you know, people getting cheated, et cetera, et cetera. Like I've been approached by USANA for probably 25 years with many different USANA people and I never looked at it. I've looked at the product, and one of the reasons that I didn't get in was that I don't believe in the system. I looked at the product, it's not bad. But anyway, so when the reason I decided, okay, I can do this is I got an advantage over you because when I found out about Organo, you were the one that doing it. And I've already... You know, you're one of my mentors that I follow. We always said that we always stand on the shoulder of the giant. So, you know, when one of your giant is doing this, that make it easier for me. So, you know, I know I'm one of those lucky ones, but there's other people out there that, you know, don't know whatever. You got to sort of let go and give it a try. If you don't try it, you're never going to know, right? So trying and not trying is this fine line. You don't even have to say yes, no, whatever. If you don't look at it, you never know that you're going to miss this opportunity. And so, you know, my mom always said, never give up. You have to keep doing it until where you want to be type of thing. So, you know, you don't look at it and you turn around. What if this is going to be a diamond mine for you? So you have to always give it a, at least one chance. You know, I, you warm my heart because I, I, you know, we had a great conversation in Houston just a month ago and it brought both, I'm not ashamed to say tears because it was so, yes. so warm and, and what a beautiful connection we've made with so many people around the world. I always say the, the biggest value uh, of this business has been the friendships everywhere and, and I'm honored to count you in that group now we you know we were professional colleagues and I knew of you but now I know a lot more of you I know your heart uh, I know the direction you're going I know what you're doing for your beautiful family and our world and I just want to give you a, a big thank you for that I want I want to wrap up with a couple of questions and yeah. one let's go to both ends of the spectrum I'm going to ask you what's the biggest mistake you've made and then I actually want to ask you what's the best thing you've done for, for your business. We'll wrap with those two. So we'll finish on a high note. Biggest mistake in terms of Organo? The biggest mistake in terms of Organo is overexcited at some time and also overthinking. Mm. 
when I said overexcited, when I found the product and how good it can be for so many people, I will talk to them before they even can say a word. I will just keep telling them all these things. And they looked at me and they think that this is too good to be true. You know, yeah, because it's, you're my friend, I'm listening to you, but, and then that's it. And so with that, my other side of the spectrum is that because of that, now I am overthinking, should I talk to this person? Should I talk to that person? What if I talk to that person and they don't, you know, think I'm good anymore because I'm in network marketing? What if they think that, you know, oh, I'm in a network marketing and I'm not a good practitioner anymore? All of those things actually slow you down and actually give me anxiety attack and panic attack. So now I'm trying to change that mindset and saying, okay, this is it. You know, I'm living in the moment. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to just let them try it. So that's my switch. What is the best thing with Organo? It's for ourselves, actually. I'm always looking for a better way, healthier way of living for myself and my family. So the best thing is that I love coffee. And like I said, I couldn't drink much. When I was in pharmacy school, I would drink about 10 cups of coffee a day to get my mind going, to keep awake, to study. And after that, I, after the general pharmacy school, I started getting these side effects of heart palpitation, jitters, all of that, and headache and stomach ache. So I had to stop coffee. I grew up with coffee back home too, so I love coffee. So when I found this, and knowing that even it's healthier, that's bonus for me. And so, you know, that is really good. And also that being able to share and like some of my patients, one lady that I remember, she came to me for cortisol test because I know she's stressed. She's doing master's degree and thesis and stuff. She can sleep. So we did the cortisol saliva test. Her brain was not working to the point that I give the simple instruction how to collect the saliva for cortisol test. She screwed up to the point that we have to give her three extra test kit. And that time frame redoing the test was a month. Meantime, every time she come in, she'll drink my coffee. And then she decided a week later, she bought a box. And by the end of the time when we actually got her saliva test, cortisol test, everything was normal. And she looked at me and she said, could that be this coffee? Because she said, my anxiety is better and I'm sleeping now compared to a month ago. So that's the best thing with organo for me is some of these difficult patients sometimes that you know you get so frustrated you tell them what to do and they can't even follow the instruction meantime they're drinking coffee and it's changing their life i love it so uh, i'm a big fan of, of one thing i like the book the one thing the one word the one more thing if i could tell you just one thing so I'm going to put the one thing on you. What is the one message you want to leave the world as we wrap up this conversation and you go back and enjoy your beautiful family in Florida? Keep smiling, being positive. Even though somebody is getting upset or somebody is being obnoxious, you don't know why they are like that. There is always underlying story that we don't know. So be kind. Uh, you know what? I, I think that's. And what a beautiful uh, this wonderful evening. So, Dennis, it's a distinct honor. You know, you've got the eyes of the organic world. Um, you're you're becoming more and more noticed. You've done so phenomenally well in your niche. You've helped so many people. Uh, I'm excited to help you leverage numbers and powers and uh, of network to make our world better. And I know you have the heart, mind, and spirit to do it. So I'm honored to be your colleague. I'm honored to be your friend. I'm certainly honored that uh, you're on our phenomenal Organo team. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Good night. Good night, all. God bless.